Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I wanted to make another video about the uh, pretty popular Alternative series. And the watch I want to talk about today is Alternatives to the iconic and famous Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. The original, not the offshore. Now before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Omega Speedmaster Apollo 14 on a new brown distressed collareb strap. Uh, thank you very much to Tristano from the Urban Gentry for gifting me one of these. It's a hell of a strap and I should probably make a review for you guys so uh, expect that in the future. So alternatives to the iconic Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Now the Royal Oak was released in 1972 and was designed by probably the most famous watch designer uh, to ever live, Mr. Gerald Genta. This watch made a lot of waves when it came out. It was the first luxury steel, you know, luxury steel watch. It was the first sports watch, all in steel, to cost, you know, gold watch prices. And, um, you know, a lot of people thought it was going to flop, but... Until today, since 1972, they haven't changed it much, and it's become an iconic watch. But what happens if you don't particularly love the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak? I figured I'd come up with five alternatives to the Royal Oak um, that give it kind of the same spirit as the watch. The same look, but also a little bit different, and uh, probably a little bit less expensive as well. Now, I'm going to skip some of the usual subjects, uh, so before you guys go crazy, I won't be mentioning the Nautilus or the Vacheron Constantin Overseas, also designed by Genta. Those would be a little too easy. I wanted to make this a little bit more interesting. So, to start off at number one, we have the Omega Constellation. Now, the Constellation has also been designed by Gerald Genta. And as you can see, there's a little bit of influence there. Excuse me, I'm pulling up a picture. There's a little bit of influence there. You know, the integrated bracelet, um, kind of that porthole design. It's very Junta-esque, and by the same token, very Royal Oakish. <laughs> That's even a word. I coined it. Um, this is also significantly less expensive. You can get these with an Edda movement or with the new um, coaxial Omega movements. And on the second-hand market, these should run anywhere between two and a half to 4000 So quite a bit of a price drop from the Royal Oak, which will probably cost you closer to fourteen fifteen. My second watch is also a watch that was designed by Gerald Genta. As you guys see, it's a little bit of a theme. And that is the IWC Engineer. Now, Tistano over at the Urban Gentry just made a review about this, I think about a month ago. So I'll leave a link in the description. I'll also put a little annotation up top so you guys can click on it. Now, this was also designed by Gerald Genta. As you can see, once again, integrated bracelet, porthole design, uh, exposed screws, which is a very royal look as well. And this has the added advantage of being uh, anti-magnetic. It's the anti-magnetic line of watches. It's got a Faraday cage. Now, this watch is also significantly less expensive, and you can also get it, once again, with an Eta movement or an in-house IWC, depending what year you get. And this will run you anywhere between 27 to 2700 to 5000 in steel. And you've got a lot of the same look. As you can see, it even looks a little bit like the Nautilus and the overseas and once again that is not a coincidence those pieces were also designed by Gerald Genta. This next piece might be a little controversial. Now Mr. Genta didn't design this even though he did design some other pieces for the company he just didn't design this particular watch and this is the Bulgari Diagono. Italian Swiss watchmaker Bulgari. Um, this is kind of their more sporty line. Once again, you can see the integrated bracelet, a little bit of that porthole design, even though this is significantly rounder than my other selections. And the bracelet is actually the key component here. It's made very, very well. 
This comes in a chronograph or non-chronograph version, like the Royal Oak, and it's an Etta Movement. These are very undervalued in the second-hand market, so you can pick these up anywhere from 16, 1700 all the way to 4000 if you want a chrono version. Take a look at it. It's, uh, it's a pretty great piece, and I think it's very, very classy. Now, we move along to another Bulgari. Now this, if you looked at this watch, you'd say Genta definitely designed that. But he actually didn't. It was certainly inspired by Genta design, though. And this is the Bulgari Octo. You have, once again, the famous porthole design, but this is an octagon. Eight sides on the case, very royal oak as well. Now this is a newer line for Bulgari, so you won't be able to find these that easily. And I think most of them, if not all of them, are actually in-house movements. So this is a little bit more on the expensive side. Expect to pay six to eight thousand dollars for this piece. And last but not least, we have what everybody thinks is the biggest homage watch to the AP, and that is the Hublot Classic Fusion. Now, Jean-Claude Bivet, the original CEO of Hublot, I think the inventor of the brand, admitted himself there is a little bit of inspiration from the AP. And you can see it, once again, exposed screws, it's, um, it's a porthole design. In fact, the name Hublot means window in French, so it's definitely porthole inspired. And it comes on either a rubber strap or a metal bracelet. Now these pieces right here are all at a driven pieces. However, Hublot assembles the movements fully in-house and changes the rotors and whatnot. Now these pieces are actually beautiful. It's one of my favorite. It's very industrial design. It's a little bit more of a modern take on the Royal Oak. And you can get these for very, very inexpensive considering what the retail is. I mean, retail is about 14,000, not, not too much lower than the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. And you can get these for about four and a half to 7,000, depending on the model. And, you know, I really like it. I find it to be a modern, modern twist, so to speak, on a very classic design. Now, guys, what did you think of my list? I'm sure I missed a few. Leave me your suggestions in the comments below. And uh, we're really close to 5,000 subs. I mean, less than 200 to go, I think. And I promised I'd release a State of the Collection video at 5,000. So keep hitting that subscribe button. It really, really uh, motivates me. And you won't miss any content that I come out with. Anyway, thank you for sticking around for another video of Federico Talks Watches, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.